importantly, uh, you know, Castrol is one of the stocks which is also up, up and about in today's trading session. But numbers coming in, 6% growth in the revenues, EBITDA up around 8%, 6% growth in the net profit as well. We have with us the management of Castrol joining in. Um, we'll, we'll shortly get to the management Mr. Sandeep, of, I think. Mr. Sandeep uh, is there with us. Okay, thanks a lot, uh, Mr. Sandeep, for joining in. Um, you know, just wanted your thoughts on what exactly is the volume growth in this quarter. Could you split your, uh, you know, revenue growth of 6% into volumes and realizations, a specific volume number if you must? Yeah, so, so I think, uh, first of all, uh, as you were sharing the results, for, we are very happy with the full year results. We report Jan to December numbers, revenue at 5,000 plus, uh, 5,075 crores, the highest ever, and PBT at uh, 1181 uh, crores is also the highest. And as we celebrate 125 years of uh, Castrol globally and 115 years in India, to celebrate the occasion and also based on good performance, the board has recommended a final total dividend of 7 rupees 50 paisa. Okay. And uh, in the second half, we also launched many initiatives around uh, something around Barte Raho, Aage and Pragati Ki for truck, uh, truckers community. We also launched India's uh, ultimate motor star uh, for two-wheeler riders. And our network for Castrol Auto Service is expanded to 450 now. We're pushing into rural India uh, or uh, Bharat uh, uh, for uh, distribution expansion. And we also launched AutoCare, which is gaining uh, good traction in the trade, which is available in 21,000 outlets now. Uh, coming to your uh, question around what has driven top line growth, our, our volume growth in the fourth quarter has been in uh, double digits. I would say uh, early double digits. And... On realization side, I think uh, in 23 uh, specifically, we played a very good balancing game between volume and margin growth. Because if you remember in 22, it was a very high inflationary environment where we had to take multiple price increases. And in 23, we've been able to pass on some of the uh, some of the deflation and uh, co uh, cost of goods that we saw uh, lesser inflationary environment. We passed that back to customers and consumers. So we played that volume margin balance uh, pretty well in 23. All right. Hi, Mr. Sangwan. Uh, good morning and thanks so much for joining in, Nigel, on this side. Uh, for the year, could you give us what was the volume growth? You know, for the quarter, you told us early double digits. For the past yeah. year, what was the volume growth? For this year, what kind of a volume growth are you looking at? And as you guided earlier, 23% was the margin growth that you guided for. But for 24, what is it going to be? You achieved the 23%. So I think uh, typically we stay away from giving any guidance because I think the, uh, the the environment is still very inflationary. We don't know where what is going to be the impact of, uh, the, for example, things happening in Red Sea, which is having an impact on freight rates already. But I think uh, if I look at 23, our uh, volume growth was in uh, high single digits. And I think our intent is always to grow a few points ahead of the market. And lubricants category, uh, we see typically uh, grows by about 4 to 5%. That's what we've seen. And I, we expect it to continue growing at the same level. And from a margin perspective, we, we always endeavor to be in a better range of about 23 to 26%. And we want to protect those levels of margins. And given the investments we make uh, behind our brand, uh, we are very confident that we should be able to deliver those margins. 23 to 26% is a fair band. I mean, you ended the year with 23.5% and the fourth quarter was 26%. With the raw material environment right now and most of it being imported for you, where do you, you know, see this sustaining at least in the next couple of quarters with the visibility that you have? How much yeah. will you drive volume growth and how much will there be realization cuts? Uh, will the margins be closer to 26% or will they be closer to 23%? Just wanted your thoughts on the way you look at markets over the next uh, couple of quarters. I think, as I said, the cost uh, side is still going to be inflationary, uh, as we uh, expect, uh, as impacts of uh, various geopolitical events uh, come through. But India, as, a, uh, as an economy, is doing well. So I think we should be able to maintain around 24%, uh, 25% levels, uh, because I think our intent is to continue driving top-line growth along with protecting margins. That's, that's where our efforts are. So. Okay, all right. And what about the new products? So, you know, as a percentage, uh, what is, does it contribute right now? You briefly mentioned in your introduction uh, itself that you, you'll have to focus a little bit on that as well. And where is that yeah. going to contribute as a percentage of a mix? So, so I think right now our intent is to start building businesses which go beyond traditional uh, lubricants. And if I look at the mm -hmm. next uh, five to ten year horizon, I think the lubricants category will continue to grow at four five percent, and that is where 
most of the growth uh, will come from. At the same time, I think uh, we uh, we've launched Castrol EV fluids. We supply to two of mm -hmm. the largest OEMs in the country on passenger car side. Okay, but it's, uh, the volumes are still very uh, small and uh, tiny. I think this is it'll take time for those volumes to grow. And the second is auto care. I think we launched in May of this year. We're gaining good traction. As I said, they're available in 21,000 outlets now. We almost cover about 100,000 plus outlets across the country. Uh, so early shoots of uh, good acceptability by trade and consumers, but uh, from a contribution perspective, I think it'll uh, be another four or five years uh, before they become a, a slightly significant uh, part of the contribution. Could you define significant over the next three to five years? Where do you see EV fluids as a part of your overall mix? And also, I remember the global parent would be investing about 500 crores in battery thermal management as well. You did say that. So both yes. battery thermal management and EV fluids as a proportion of your sales, say in the next three to five years, where do you see this, you know, as a part of your business? I think it's difficult to kind of share any uh, percentage numbers in terms of contribution. It'll depend on how the uh, the EV ecosystem evolves, which we are fully supportive of, uh, hmm. and the government is making a huge, uh, big push on green uh, economy as well. But I think hmm. cars, uh, where a lot of the EV fluids get used, will still be very small in the next five years. Uh, okay, oh. and uh, it won't be any, uh, I would say, uh, it won't start making a huge impact to the overall p &L of the company. What do you think would be the overall market size of EV fluids, according to you? I'm not talking about just you as a player, but the opportunity. And will that opportunity be enough to, you know, do good for the fluids that would be lost because of the IC engines going off? I mean, just from a business standpoint? Oh. So our projection is, and I think that's uh, uh, what a lot of our uh, other players in the category also uh, uh, believe. I think from an India perspective, uh, the ICE vehicles and the lubricants category will, uh, the core lubricants, traditional uh, lubricants category will continue growing till about 2040. Okay, so, so I think if I look at the next 10, even 10, 15 years, the business will grow on the back of traditional lubricants. EVs will come. But will they shake up the, uh, uh, the whole PNL? Uh, I We don't think so at this moment. And ICE is still relevant as far as India is concerned. Okay. All right. What is the retail aftermarket share, sir? So typically, uh, we talk about retail automotive aftermarket share. Okay. And we're in the, uh, in the range of about uh, early 20s. Yeah. Have um, you improved out there? And these are uh, shares as reported by Nielsen, sir. But has your market share improved a little bit? I think we've been able to kind of uh, hold and in uh, specific segments, yes, we've improved our market share uh, uh, marginally, okay. But I think both 22 and 23 have been kind of managing volatility in the environment and balancing share, margin, volume, uh, profile, I think which we've done very successfully, so. Do you have any tie-up with uh, any auto company exclusively for supplying and, you know, in the market share itself, I just wanted to know servicing as well. You, a lot of the players go ahead and tie up with exclusive services and that gives them a sustainable revenue. Have you done any of that? So I think we supply to OEMs. We supply to the biggest OEMs in, uh, in the country, uh, whether it is uh, kind of, uh, we, we work with uh, Maruti Suzuki, we work with Tata Motors, we work with uh, the likes of Renault, where we have uh, our relationships, okay? And that is a part of our uh, uh, business. But we are also building a multi-brand workshop network in the aftermarket. So we have, uh, these are not owned assets, but these are kind of where we provide branding support because consumers trust Castrol and we provide them training and uh, we provide uh, training to their mechanics and the system. So we have a network of about 450 uh, Castrol auto services across the country now, uh, which is gaining good traction where consumers can get uh, good quality service. Uh, <clears throat> so that's kind of the uh, focus area. We work with OEM, we work in the retail automotive aftermarket, and it's a good combination uh, uh, that we keep uh, building. Because what we understand is that uh, you perhaps are planning with uh, one of the two-wheelers, TVS, etc., to uh, you know start this exclusive partnership. So could you comment on that? Yeah, so we've invested in a TBS group company, Key Mobility Solutions, which is part of the mm -hmm. TBS group. And we've taken a 7% stake in that company. And uh, that company is, uh, it has a spare parts business. It is also building an aftermarket digital ecosystem and also a network uh, of workshops. 
and they're working across four wheelers and two wheelers and commercial vehicles. And I think our intent is to give consumers good quality service by two of the trusted brands coming together, which is kind of uh, uh, their brand is my TVS, our brand is Castrol, and we're working in a partnership to, to continue building that uh, aftermarket ecosystem uh, for the consumers where they can get quality services. Okay, all right. Thanks a lot, sir, for joining and giving us all of those details. Wishing you all the best for the coming quarters. And we look forward to see how your business shapes up in the coming quarters as well.